குறிஞ்சி சீனியர் செகண்டரி ஸ்கூல் சிபிஎஸ்இ நாமக்கல் சக்சஸ்ஃபுல் ரிசல்ட் ப்ரொடியூசிங் ஸ்கூல் இன் ஸ்டேட் எவ்ரி இயர் அட்மினிஸ்டர்ட் பை த போர்ட் ஆஃப் டைரக்டர்ஸ் வித் ஓவர் 35 இயர்ஸ் ஆஃப் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் இன் தி டீச்சிங் ஃபீல்ட் ஸ்பெஷல் அட்டென்ஷன் ஆன் ஆர்ட் கிராஃப்ட் மியூசிக் டான்ஸ் சிலம்பம் யோகா ஸ்கேட்டிங் அண்ட் கராத்தே ஃபோக்கஸ் ஆன் ஹிந்தி சபா அண்ட் ஸ்பெல் பி ஒலிம்பியட் எக்ஸாம்ஸ் ஸ்மார்ட் கிளாஸ் ஃபார் எஃபெக்டிவ் அண்ட் இனோவேட்டிவ் லேர்னிங் அண்ட் வெல் ஃபர்னிஷ்ட் லைப்ரரி சாலிட்டரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ஸ் ஆன் ஸ்போர்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் கேம்ஸ் இன் ஸ்டேட் அண்ட் நேஷனல் லெவல் வாட்ஸ் அப் facilities to know activities of students and school inside the campus free bus for lkg to 8th standard free hygienic and nutritious food neat jee iit coaching experts from rajasthan and andhra pradesh along with our effective teachers admission registration for classes lkg to plus 2 kurunji education institution kaveti patti namakkal admission in progress cbse kg to 12 contact 9025895176 metric 6212 contact 9344567484 for online admission log on to www.kurunjischoolnkl.in so in today class we are going to discuss derivation of kinematic equations calculus method afterwards we'll go for a problem based on the equations of motion okay right so now we'll concentrate on derivation of kinematic equations calculus method so please understand ma yesterday also we discussed derivation of kinematic equation but it is linear and graphical method so based on graph and linearly we derived yesterday equations of motion but today we are going to discuss same kinematic equation derivations based on calculus method okay so today topic is derivation of kinematic equations calculus method so please be concentrate by the definition of acceleration you know very well acceleration is the rate of change of velocity otherwise change in velocity to the change in time interval see here so dv by dt so generally what we are writing a is equal to v2 minus v1 by t2 minus t1 otherwise v minus v0 by t minus t0 initial and final time similarly initial and final velocity okay so acceleration is the rate of change of velocity so mathematically you can write it as a is equal to dv by dt then from this we are writing dv is equal to a into dt so we are taking this dt to that side then you can write dv is equal to a into dt now we are going to integrate on both the sides so then we can write like this integration v not to v so it is the initial velocity ama it is the final velocity so between these two limits initial velocity and final velocity we are going to integrate the velocity similarly here the time interval is 0 to t this side a into dt okay so what i am saying is we are going to integrate this equation on both the sides within the limits so you please try to understand the limits also when the time is zero its velocity is v not which is initial velocity when the time is t its velocity is v that is the reason for velocity these are the time intervals initial and final for time these are the intervals 0 and t so that you can write this expression next if you go for next step so if you apply the limits as well as if you complete the integration so you come here ma so this is the formula integration dt is equal to t plus c similarly integration dx is equal to x plus c similar to that you can write integration dv is equal to v plus c so constant c is the constant of integration so that here in place of integration dv you can write v but there are limits no lower limit is v not upper limit is v so when you are putting v v not and v here so v minus v not will come v minus v not will come similarly this side t minus 0 will come see here integration dt so a is constant no so you can take it outside so 0 to t dt will come so integration dt is equal to t plus c so t then limits are there lower limit is 0 upper limit is t 
So, that T minus 0 that is equal to T. So, here V minus V naught is left hand side, right hand side A into T, A into T. From this you can write V is equal to V naught plus A T, V is equal to V naught plus A T. It is the first equation of motion, first kinematic equation of motion. When your body is moving with certain amount of initial velocity or zero initial velocity, it depends upon the situation. And with respect to time, if the velocity is going to increase from V naught to V, having A uniform acceleration, then you can write this expression V is equal to V naught plus A T. So, the same thing yesterday also we discussed, but the process of derivation only different. So, yesterday we followed a linear method, today we are following calculus method, right. Next, so now we derived first equation of motion through calculus method. So, first we have taken definition of acceleration that we are writing mathematically like this, then we are integrating on both the sides within the limits. So, the limits are like this. So, when the time is 0, the velocity is said to be initial velocity which is V naught. When the time is t, its velocity is V. Okay. So, that here you can write V minus V naught through the integration and applying the limits this side integration 0 to t dt is equal to t will come through the process of completing integration and applying the limits also. Then v is equal to v naught plus a t. So, it is the first equation of motion we derived. Then we are going to derive second equation of motion, second equation of motion see here. So, we are taking this relation this is what definition of velocity, velocity is a rate of change of displacement, velocity is defined as rate of change of displacement. Otherwise, velocity is defined as the change in displacement in a given time interval, in a given time interval. Otherwise, velocity is defined as change in displacement in unit time interval, unit time interval. So, that you can write V is equal to dx by dt then dx is equal to v into dt mathematically. So, you know very well v is equal to v naught plus a t, it is from first equation of motion. From first equation of motion, you can write v is equal to v naught plus a t. So, that only we did here, observe carefully from equation 1 v is equal to v naught plus a t that we substituted here in place of v, we substituted. So, that dx is equal to v naught plus a t into d t right. Okay. Now, we are going to integrate on both the sides see here. So, we also apply limits. So, when the time is 0 the displacement is x naught, when the time is t the displacement is x. So, for displacement side the lower limit is x naught upper limit is x. So, that integrate x naught to x dx this is what LHS left hand side. If you go for right hand side, so we are writing this one including the limits 0 to t. So, lower limit is 0, upper limit is t. So, these are the time intervals 0 to t right. So, now as usual first integration dx is equal to x plus c right. C is the constant of integration and if you apply the limits, the lower limit is x naught, upper limit is x. So, that x minus x naught will come. So, this side LHS x minus x naught and RHS side. So, this is what the u plus v into dx formula. So, this is the formula from calculus integration right. So, if you apply that formula you can write like this. So, integration 0 to t v naught into d t plus integration 0 into t a t into d t right. So, v naught is the initial velocity. So, which is constant for one particular journey then integration 0 to t dt will become t right. So, here so that you can write v naught into t plus a into integration x dx is equal to x square by 2 plus c will come. So, integration 0 to t t to dt means t square by 2 will come. So, a is the uniform acceleration no. So, which is the constant acceleration also. So, that here a into t square by 2 right. So, a is taking outside integration 0 to t, t into dt will become t square by 2 including the applying of limits, 
including the applying of limits. So, it is a t square by 2. Then finally, v naught into t plus a t square by 2. So, if you send x naught to that side, then x is equal to x naught plus v naught into t plus a t square by 2. This is the second equation of motion, which is the second equation of motion. Okay, right. Next, uh, we are going to derive third equation of motion. That is you know very well, v square is equal to v naught square plus 2 a into x minus x naught. This is the third equation of motion. Okay, right. So, come back to this point. We know that acceleration is the uh, change in velocity by time. So, that is what mathematically a is equal to dv by dt. So, that you can write like this mathematically. So, I am writing dv by dx into dx by dt. If you cancel these two dx and dx then finally, we will get the same right. That is the reason we are writing dv by dt like this dv by dx into dx by dt. Okay. So, by writing like this, this value will not change you know that is the reason we can write. Next uh, dx by dt means what it is v. So, see here velocity is the rate of change of displacement. So, in place of dx by dt you can write v, this is same dv by dx. So, finally, a is equal to v into dv by dx. Next, take this dx to that side. So, dx take to the left hand side, then what is a into dx is equal to v into dv. So, that we are writing. So, you can change you know, so it is not a problem LHS you can write RHS side, RHS you can write LHS side when there is a multiplication and there is no chance to change the meaning or value. Okay. So, v into dv is equal to a into dx, this is the e expression you can write from above. Right. Now, we start to integrate on both the sides and also applying the limits, see here. So, when the displacement is x naught, its velocity is v naught, so initial velocity. So, we integrate the velocity between the limits v naught and v this side x naught to x. So, that this is the expression. Then integration v into dv is equal to v square by 2 will come, v square by 2. So, v square by 2 v naught v. This side a into x x naught x. Okay. So, if you integrate this is the situation, this is the expression we are getting afterwards applying the limits. So, generally first we are applying the upper limit, then we are applying the lower limit. So, here v square by 2 minus v naught square by 2 will come. So, that we can write v square minus v naught square by 2 that is equal to a into x minus x naught, a into x minus x naught right. Next, you can write uh, take this 2 to the right hand side then 2 a into x minus x naught and v square is equal to v naught square plus 2a into x minus x naught. So, it is the third equation of motion, which is the third equation of motion that is important, right? Because we have three equations of motion. So, we derived first equation of motion and second equation of motion and third equation of motion through calculus method, through calculus method. Okay? So, by integrating and by applying the limits because we have to consider one example while solving all these equations of motion. So, what is that example? A time t is equal to 0, a time t is equal to 0, its velocity is v naught. At the same time, a time t is equal to 0, its displacement is x naught. Then body starts to move over the time interval. After certain time interval, its velocity is increased to v. Meanwhile, it has acceleration a. Okay. So, that is the situation, right? Okay. So, see one more important small important point more here used for motion with non-uniform acceleration also, right? So, when you are when you are following the process of calculation, sorry, calculus, when you are following the process of calculus, then you can apply these equations of motion for non-uniform acceleration also, right? So, what is non-uniform acceleration? So, non-uniform acceleration means if your body covers, please listen carefully ma, because yesterday I explained you what is meant by uniform acceleration. 
Now, I am explaining what is meant by non uniform acceleration, right. See here, when a body covers equal amount of changes in velocity in unequal intervals of time or unequal amount of changes in velocity in equal intervals of time. However, the small intervals may be, however, the small intervals may be, then the body is said to be moving with non uniform acceleration. So, I will repeat once again a body is said to be moving with non uniform acceleration when it covers equal amount of change in velocity equal amount of changes in velocity in equal intervals of sorry e equal amount of changes I uh, will repeat once again more from starting onwards sorry for inconvenience. A body is said to be moving with non uniform acceleration when it covers equal amount of changes in velocities in unequal intervals of time or 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 unequal amount of change in velocity in equal intervals of time however the small intervals may be so in this situation when a body is covering equal amount of change in velocities in unequal intervals of time or unequal amount of change in velocities in equal intervals of time then the body is said to be moving with non uniform acceleration non uniform acceleration okay so when the body is non when the body is moving with non uniform acceleration also you can apply this calculus method of derivation calculus method of derivation of equations of motion generally we are using integration or the calculus method or differentiation for variable quantities right so here non uniform acceleration means the acceleration of the body is changing with respect to time okay right now we are going to discuss one problem so this is the important problem not only for our board purpose even for neat and mains point of view also okay right see here see the problem first i'll read the problem then i'll go for solution right see here a ball is thrown vertically upwards with a velocity of 20 meters per second from the top of a multi story building multi story building full stop the height of the point from where the ball is thrown is 25 meters from the ground find how high the ball will rise b how long will it be before the ball hits the ground i will repeat once again a ball is thrown vertically upwards with a velocity of 20 meters per second from the top of multi story building the height of the point from where the ball is thrown is 25 meters from the ground this is the information they have given asking to find two things one is how high the ball will rise next one is how long will it be before the before the ball hits the ground right so these two things we have to find they have given g value also it is 10 meters per second square right okay so after reading this information in physics it is very very important to draw the picture so if you draw the picture the understanding will be very easy so there is, there will be no confusion you can easily solve the problem right so every time we have to draw the picture we have to try to draw the picture based on the given information right now you see this picture now see here so this is the this is the building so what is the height of the building 25 meters see here height of the point from where the ball is thrown so this is the point a this is the point exactly the light point right so this is the point where the ball is going to throw so this is the top of the multi story building from ground the height will be 25 meters so it is 25 meters from the ground okay right next find 
how high the ball will rise see here so a to b this is the height from a to b this is the height uh, this is the height the ball will rise okay right so this height he is asking to find at the same time to reach this height we need to provide certain in certain initial velocity you know at point a that velocity is 20 meters per second so 20 meters per second is the initial velocity we provided to the ball at point a so that it can reach the point b so this is the height we have to find here so a how high the ball will rise right next question is b how long will it be before the ball hits the ground how long will it be before the ball hits the ground so we have to find the time from here to there and there to ground so this is the time see the red light ma so from a to b and then b to o right so this is the point o so this is the horizontal line right so anywhere you can take uh, so here we need the displacement right so this is the point like o ma so here we need to find b according to the b we have to find the time from a to b and then b to o so this total time we have to find how long so we have to find the time okay so these two things we have to find right and one more thing is try to understand the picture what i have written here so i am calling from the time from a to b as t1 time from b to o as t2 so what we have to find according to the picture t1 plus t2 we have to find t1 plus t2 we have to find at the same time try to understand this is y this is y not so if you take the situation from here then this is y not this is y right then automatically it will be what y minus y not y minus y not it is the upward journey it is the downward journey it is the upward journey it is the downward journey okay so these are the things from this picture so first you try to understand the figure or picture okay right now we are going for solution see here a so first we are going to solve a then we will go for b okay right so in a first you have to write the given things what are the things given v naught here it is 20 meters per second next a is equal to minus g so the body is going up so in between points a and b the body is in upward journey so when the body is moving upwards is to its velocity will be decreased as time passes so that the body is in retarding position the body is in retarding position so that according to the sign convention a is equal to minus g so that minus 10 because g value they have given as 10 so a is equal to minus g that is equal to minus 10 meter per second square minus 10 meter per second square next v is equal to 0 meter per second here at point b its velocity is 0 from that point of time it comes back ok right then using the equations so what is this equation it is third equation of motion it is third equation of motion so this is just as it is ma. so when a body is moving along x axis we put x minus x naught here the body is moving along y axis no along y axis so that we put y minus y naught conceptually no difference it is along x axis it is along y axis ok right so this is the equation according to the third third kinematic equation ok right next substitute the given things so v is 0 and v naught is 20 square plus 2 into a is equal to minus 10 and y minus y naught then we get y minus y naught is equal to 20 meters so it will be 400 ma it will be 400 when this 400 will come will become this side minus 400 already minus 20 right so y minus y naught will become as 20 meters so this is 20 meters this is 20 meters right so how high the ball will rise means the answer is 20 meters ok right next here we have to find time because how long will it be before the ball hits the ground ok that is so we have to find time we are following two methods so after listening whatever the method you comfort that you can follow 
ok right first I am going to explain first method. So, this is the first equation of motion already we know V is equal to V naught plus A t right ok. So, you take this this part of journey ma this part of journey. So, in this part of journey V naught is 20 V is 0. So, that we substituted here minus A is equal to minus 10 no actually it is plus A, but A is equal to minus 10 when the body is in upward motion no. So, that it is minus 10 this this I am assuming as T 1 I already told you right T 1. So, that you can find 0 is equal to 20 minus 10 T 1 T 1 is equal to 2 seconds that is only from A to B. So, for the body to move from A to B it takes 2 seconds. So, we found T 1 next see here. So, this is what third equation of motion uh, sorry it is second equation of motion right x is equal to x naught plus v naught into t plus a t square by 2 when a body is moving along x axis, but here the body is moving along y axis now. So, that we modified we replaced x with y that is the only difference right ok. So, here y is equal to y. So, now we are taking now we are seeing this part of journey. So, that is from b to o right see here y is equal to y is equal to y naught plus v naught into t plus half a t square. So, if you substitute the quantities what they have given right. So, the body is falling from here now. So, it is 20 just now we found it is 25. So, the total height is 45. So, y naught is 45 here plus this v naught is equal to 0 v naught. So, because the body falling from here here the velocity is 0. So, when v naught is equal to 0 this total down will become 0 then automatically 1 by 2 into minus 10 into t 2 square. So, that if you solve this if you do this calculation then you will get t 2 as 3 seconds. So, t 2 square will become 9 t 2 is equal to 3 seconds. So, we need to find the time from a to b and b to o. So, it is t 1 plus t 2. So, then totally according to the question for answer for uh, this b the answer is 5 seconds because it is 2 seconds from here to there and from here to here is 3 seconds totally it is 5 seconds ok right. Now, the same thing the same b we are going to solve in second method also see here. So, this is the same equation that is what uh, second equation of motion, but this equation we are going to apply for whole journey from a to o a to b and b to o. Just now we separated first we found the time from a to b then we found from b to o. So, that it is uh, first it is 2 seconds and it is 3 seconds total time is 5 seconds the answer is 5 seconds, but now directly we are going to apply the equation for whole journey that is from a to b and b to o right. So, see here so y is equal to the displacement. So, if you substitute all the things y naught it is 25 ok because the body is here now for when we are solving the second method. So, here it is uh, body so it is 25 plus v naught is equal to 20 because here v naught is equal to 20 they have given initial velocity into t plus 1 by 2 into a is equal to minus 10 t square. Then we are getting this equation. So, divide the whole equation with 5 then t square minus 40 minus 5 is equal to 0. Then this minus 40 you can write it as plus t minus 5 t. So, if you take the t outside t plus 1 here minus 5 into t plus 1 is equal to 0 t minus 5 is equal to 0 and t plus 1 is equal to 0. So, if you take this one t will become as 5 seconds if you take this one t will become as minus 1 second right. But the thing is time can never be negative time can never be negative. So, that we cannot take t as minus 1. So, the answer will be t is equal to 5 seconds ok right. So, in today class once again I will revise ma, just within a 1 minute. So, today class we focused on derivation of kinematic equations in calculus method that is one thing. Next we gone through one problem. So, that is based on the equations of motion ok. 